Hey guys, I'm just showing you guys the time lapse putting the rest of the pistons in. Um, just said I would, so here it is. Hey guys, um, sorry for the background noise. I got some stuff in the parts wash that I gotta get cleaned up before I go home, so there'll be a little bit of background noise in this one. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna check piston protrusion. Um, I have done a bunch of videos, or a couple videos. This is one of the ones that I use. Um, it, there, it's just a preform one. I'll put a link down below for it. And then also I do have one that uh, we've made um, that I'll probably make up some of those as well. Just, you know, only got so much time in the day. So what we got here is um, I'm gonna do one and six. And what I always do So doing this, you want to zero, make sure you zero your gauge and make it, I always go one turn in on the gauge when you're setting it up. So it's a hundred thou. So you make sure that you're not at the end of your, your reach of your gauge. And if you, for you guys that don't know what I mean by that is if you look at the gauge, there's the inside, the little tiny one there. And you want to go all the way, you want to go around at least once so that you know that you're in where it needs to be. So I'm just going to double check that, make sure, whoop, make sure that we're zero. And you put it on there. Now we're just going to roll the motor over. We're just going to go. We are 37 thou. So our allowable on this one. I did want to mention, I forgot to say this. Um, I always check both sides of the piston and then, this, and then the middle of the piston. So you want to check that while you're doing this. Um, just to make sure all the numbers coincide and the piston is straight. You know, if you have other videos, you want to check those right yeah, so your piston protrusion is, is 24 to 28, technically. So we're going to do a, we're at 37. We're going to do a 10 overhead gasket, which I already knew we had to do because we surfaced 10 off the block. Um, and then you want to do the same thing on the back. It's actually not a horrible idea to do all of them. And it really comes down to it. just back it off we'll do the same thing yeah and we're we're in the same realm going a half a thou according to the gauge so I'm not too worried about it well that is something if you guys are having compression issues or any of that type of stuff and you have the cylinder head off maybe doing a head gasket or something check the piston protrusion on all your pistons um, because if you're having a bearing issue if you're having a rod issue um, it'll actually tell you if you got one that's way different than the others um, you'll know that there's an issue there because it shouldn't be they should all be within depending on the rod because the rods will change a little bit but depending on the rods I would say within three thou of each other um, if you're more than that out um, there's something funky going on so now we got that done what I'm gonna do what we're gonna do um, is we are going to I'm gonna flip the engine over and we're going to put the oil pan and the pickup on it. Uh, actually, we got to do the rear seal first. Um, so we'll do the rear seal. We'll put the pickup and the oil pan on. That's going to have the bottom end buttoned up. And then we'll see how much time I have after that. Uh, we might put the side cover, the tappet cover, side cover, whatever you want to call it. And if we have enough time, we'll do the head gas or the head and the head gasket as well. See how much time we got here. I'd like to get this thing together. Um, I'm, I want to get it painted and all that jazz. So. Uh, I'd say by the look of it, if I'm going to do the rear main seal, I'm going to have to pull it off the stand. So, what do you do? 
I guess well well well, we'll, we'll I, I gotta I want to put the oil pan on and get the, the thing sealed up so either way we'll have to do it I just didn't want to have to take it off the stand but I might have to take half of it off the stand to uh, do the seal but anyways um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some stuff get some stuff set up and then uh, we'll be back hey guys so back here we're gonna put the uh, rear seal in the housing so all we do is just blast these up and clean them. You know, you can wire wheel it, however. <clears throat> this is not very hard to do, um, but just so you guys see. So you're gonna go, this lip piece is always gonna go towards, the lip is always gonna go towards the oil. So you drop that in there. This is your installer and your depth tool. And I know lots of guys, they get right carried away and use all kinds of whizzy stuff, but this is how I do it. I do have the actual tool for doing it, but I don't use it. You just tap it in so it's all the way around. I just use a dead blow. Um, you don't have to use, a, like you don't want to use a steel hammer. You can, I don't know I have, but I would recommend using a dead blow. takes i have done i don't even I, I honestly don't know how many a lot of them like that and i've never had a problem with one you don't have to drive them in quite that far but that's the do the tool that's how long far the tool goes in so that's the way that i've always done it i've done lots i've do them on the engines because it, you can actually if you're doing it on the engine this lip actually stops it but i prefer I prefer it to go on a little bit farther myself um, and the reason for that is is that you get into a different wear spot so um, let me just pull you guys over here so I had to kind of half pull it off the stand to be able to do it but you can see where the where the clean spot is on the crankshaft there I like them in a little bit farther than that. It just comes in just a little tiny bit farther. And if you do that, then you're past that spot that has been worn. Something that you do want to do, which I don't know, I don't have a clean rag in my pocket. Is that you want to make sure this is clean and dry. No oil on it. Same with the seal, it's dry lip. This is the tool that goes inside here. And you just literally just need to, it just, you don't want to roll the seal, make sure you don't roll the seal. But it's easy, that easy. Now I don't use the gasket. If you guys want to use the gasket right on, I don't use the gasket. I just use case sealant um, on these and never had an issue doing that. I like doing it that way. Do it how you'd like. Um, I'm just going to grab the, Silicone gun. So you can see where the seal used to go on there. So you just you don't have to put like crazy amount of, of silicone on it. Case sealant is what I use. There again, I Loctite the bolts. You can just, you don't have to use anything strong. I have this orange Loctite um, that I'm using up. Blue Loctite is more than sufficient for most stuff on a Cummins. So this is pretty easy. As long as you got a good, as long as you got a decent bead all the way around, just make sure that there's no breaks in it because if you have a break in your bead, then it'll leak. So all you gotta do is center that seal, this, the um, seal driver. 
as long as I got the right, looks like it. All you gotta do is push it on there. A little bit harder when the when the engine's kind of floating. But being this engine stand is not really the best engine stand for this. Is what it is. So something that you do want to note is that you want this you want the seal this seal housing to be equal with the block. So if you run your finger over it. If you run your finger over it and there's a, 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 a big edge, you'll lots of times get a little tiny edge, then you want to fix that. So you just, you know, roll the seal back and forth. And you always want to do this before you put your oil pan on um, because you want to, you want to get the seal centered. If you don't have the seal centered, it'll tear um it'll tear rear main seals out so if you want to torque these i don't usually torque them um but you're 89 inch pounds if you want to torque them. They don't need to be crazy tight, but tight is good. After you do enough of this type of stuff, there's some stuff you torque, some stuff you don't. All I do is just wipe that off. Okay, so now that we got that on there, that's pretty easy. I'm gonna put it back on the engine stand here. I won't bore you guys with doing that because it's pretty simple to do that. Um, and then we will put the pickup tube, put the pickup tube and the oil pan on. All right, so we're gonna get to, we're gonna put the pickup tube on and then the oil pan after that. And for this gasket, I put high tack on these gaskets. You don't have to. A little tiny bit of silicone works too. I just find that if you put a little bit of high tack on them, they never move around. You get your bolts started there. There again, I use Loctite on this stuff. Always, well, I always use Loctite. You can do whatever you want. And then there's two bolts that here that hold the pickup. There again, I always use Loctite on them. One bolt that I have, the wrong one. Orange. Yeah, it's kind of like didn't try anything twice. <clears throat> Hybrid string. And torque on these if you want to torque them. They're 20 foot pounds. Just so you know. And the oil pan bolts are the same way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to silicone the oil pan or uh, case seal the oil pan. I don't use a gasket. And then uh, I'll put all the bolts in and yeah. <clears throat> so we will. Good layer of this on there. You want to make sure you put a decent amount of this on there in that the oil pan isn't always flat but you don't have to get like super carried away Try to get completely covered.
Hey guys, so what I do is the excess silicone, that's the reason I put the silicone this way, is so it doesn't bulge out lots into the, uh, lots into the um, cavity of the inside of the engine. And I do is I just take my finger and run it across and smooth it out on the outside. And, uh, and then what I do afterwards, after it dries, I usually take a little bit of emery cloth or something um, and a razor blade and just clean up the edges and stuff just so it, I don't know, so it looks nice. Oh, forgot to do an outro on this one, so that'll be a wrap for this one. Um, we just got a little bit more to do, um, but we'll get to that on the next one. Like, subscribe, got any questions, comments, hit me down below, and uh, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.